Hello you Dirty Potters, how are you today? Oh boy, looks like it's time for another Glaze Review! Today we're going to be reviewing Potter's Choice Firebrick Red from Amico. Now today's episode is going to be a little bit different because usually what happens is I get a white test style or some type of product that's kind of porcelain like and then I'll get some brown clay so that way you guys can see what it looks like on either porcelain or B-Mix and then a redstone type clay or at least some brown clay. But these are my only two testers. Usually I have like a bunch of bowls over there, right? But I don't. Today we have a stack of plates. Hmm. I wonder. I, I wonder. I wonder what Dante is planning. Well, before I even had this channel, I used to buy Amico glazes all the time. Believe it or not, I didn't always make my own glazes. But there was a stage in between where I made my own glazes and where I was buying glazes. And at the store, these were some of my favorite glazes. And hands down, this was absolutely my favorite glaze. I became absolutely obsessed with trying to make the color red for such a long time that I essentially gave up and like just bought the color red. And deep firebrick red was my number one choice. Whenever I had money to buy a red, if I had like a string of reds in front of me, deep firebrick red was almost always gone off of the shelf because I was like, well, everyone knows this is the sauce when it comes to red glazes and oxidation. So now before we start this review, I want to tell you guys a little story, right? A little, little baby Dante story. Now, if you want to skip my story, you can just go here if you want to see the glaze review. But I think this is a really interesting story because it... I mean, it helps for the rest of the video. Just be patient for once, would you? Once upon a time, Dante was experimenting with making glazes, but he also had a big stock of deep fire brick red left. And his very first glaze that he ever made was a clear gloss glaze he called Milky White that he developed himself that I had to discontinue because it had crazy problems, don't at me. And he also made Ron Roy's high gloss black. Imagine that, the half breed made a black and a white, hmm. Well, one day I was messing around and I accidentally made an oil spot glaze by mixing deep fire brick from Amico and my Ron Roy's high gloss black. Something that I'm gonna show you guys today. So not only are we gonna be doing a glaze review, I'm also gonna show you guys how to make a oil spot glaze, considering that you might have Ron Roy's high gloss black recipe, which I'm sure is all over the internet, and some deep fire brick red. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm far more excited to see the oil spot glaze than I am to like test just the white and the brown, but well, we got it's a glaze review, we gotta do this, all right? Okay, so we just dipped all of these in Ron Roy's high gloss black. Now, because I like to kind of experiment a little bit, I know for a fact that I can probably put all of these with fire brick red in the middle of it and make oil spot glaze for all of them, but I kind of want to make a set just in case we put them in the online store. So these two, the bigger ones, are definitely just going to be coated on the bottom layer with fire brick red, while these two, we're going to try and make a little bit of a pattern or a design with them, just to see if we can get some difference in the color. If I remember correctly, because I haven't done this for like three years, I think you have to put a fairly heavy coat of this stuff on the bottom, so I'm just going to put a big pool of it and let it kind of play around in there for a bit until it dries. Okay. 
Okay, so over here we have a bee mix with no grog clay in it. This is pretty close to porcelain. We don't have a porcelain test aisle today, but most people use bee mix anyway, so we're gonna go with that for today. And we also have a redstone clay body. This one is specifically called redstone. I believe it's from the Aardvark company with fire brick red from Amico on it. All four of these plates are Ron Roy's high gloss black. They're all bee mix with no grog in them, but on the inside, we have that fabric red that's over the layer of Ron Roy's high gloss black. I'm pr I'm a, like a hundo and maybe 90% sure that these are gonna create an oil spot glaze. I've done this combination too many times for it not to create an oil spot glaze. So we're gonna put these in the kiln. Here's a picture of a cute dog and I will see you when these come out of the kiln. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look at the brown and the white test out first. Now this is the fire brick red on a bee mix with no grog clay body. I know I keep saying porcelainous instead of porcelain, but this is as close as you can get to porcelain without it actually being porcelain, is bee mix with no grog in it. And it did pretty well. One of the things that I've always appreciated about Firebrick Red is that the color comes out a little bit lighter than the textile. This is B-Mix, what most people use in their studios, and this always comes out like the red that I enjoy on my stuff. I personally enjoy it a little bit more on white clay, but it does work as well on brown or redstone clay. And that's the thing about it, it essentially has the same exact color on both clays. Granted, this is a little bit lighter than this is right here, but whether you're using brown clay or white clay, it pretty much comes out the same to be honest with you. I will fully admit every now and then if you don't put enough of it on you will get a little bit of a see-through spot but I don't think that's any fault of the glaze that's usually because you didn't apply enough glaze but I also kind of like that about it you can technically see a little bit of my trim line right here and that's this this is almost almost like if I decided to put this on maybe this cup right here you could probably get some really good inlay effect. I hate glazes that come out like one way by themselves, which is why I kind of like this glaze. It comes out one way, yeah, for sure, it's, it's really stable, but at the same time, if you kind of leave room for variation, it does like to break on thinner spots, like this here, or this here, you can really see it. Okay, we got the boring part out of the way. Another one. Now it's time for the plates, which I have to walk over to my kiln to get because I didn't prep this. So all four of these plates that I'm about to show you right here are all Ron Roy's high gloss black on the bottom and fire brick red on the top. This is probably the best one that we got out of the entire batch right here. Hold on, that's not part of the glaze. That's, <coughs> that's just silica. This is what I was trying to show you earlier. In my early days, I ended up making Ron Roy's high gloss black as I told you before and just kind of buying a bunch of Amico glazes and going like what works with this glaze and what works with this glaze and you know, so I found this combination by accident because a bunch of like Coyote was like, look at our new oil spot glazes. And I found out there's no such thing as an oil spot glaze, but well, okay, that's a lie because I've reviewed one on this channel. But the high majority of corporations that tell you, oh, look at our new oil spot glaze is really just requiring you to buy two different glazes and put them together in order to make an oil spot. So I kind of figured, well, I have to have glazes that do that myself, right? And man, did I find one. And this isn't like a fancy plate either. This isn't like one with a swirl in the middle and it doesn't have like a big flange or anything. This is just a regular old flat disc of a plate, you know? Granted, this should come with a warning because if you put it, I mean way, way too thick. Whoever glazed these plates made them way, way too thick. How dare he? It will start to kind of crawl much like this, but the effect of that oil spot is still very much there. Keep in mind, this works both ways. If you put Ron Roy's High Gloss Black on first, and then Fire Brick Red from Amico, it works. And then if you put on Fire Brick Red and then Ron Roy's High Gloss Black, it'll come out the same exact way, except for the black will be a little bit more predominant. 
Well, thank you guys for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork or keep up with my work, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. Hopefully you guys really enjoy these glaze reviews, especially since I have quite a bit of experience working with these. So I know a couple of tricks like this if you keep up. I hope you guys have yourselves a fantastic day and I will see you dirty potters next week. Thank you.